Hey everyone, welcome back to the Red Sofa here at Finnish Vehicle Logistics North America. I'm here with Anu Gol, uh, Executive Vice President of Service for Volkswagen Group of America, responsible for the vehicle logistics and after sales sort of the business. Um, Anu, we're going to be uh, joining. You're going to be joining us on stage soon, talking all about ETA and, and visibility across the supply chain. Um, let's start with the end customer. How much visibility and how much ETA specificity does the, does the end customer need? I, good question to start off with, right? Um, if you're the customer, there's there's one piece of data you need, and that's when am I getting my car? That's it. All other points in the node, they don't want to, they don't care about, right? It's neat when you get your car scheduled. You can see that. You can see it move through the system on a boat, on a train, get to a port. But at the end of the day, the date they want is when can I go to the dealer and get my car? Simple as that. Yeah, I, I always think that, that the customers probably don't particularly need to know how long it sat in a port in Germany or, or in the US, and maybe we don't even need to really want them to know that all the time. On the other hand, looking at your team, analysts, logistics providers, um, how much information do they need? Is there a thing as, is there such a thing as too much visibility, too, much da too many data points? Yeah, personally, I believe there is. Um, the question I always ask my team is, when you have that data, what are you going to do with it? How would your decisions change? So we talk about digitalization throughout the supply chain or full supply chain visibility end to end. Great, wonderful, um, aspirational target. And technology is there and you can do it, but it, there's different points through the system. So let's say in our, our network, there's 34 nodes of vehicles going to hit from scheduling till delivery to the dealer, or delivery to the customer. Which elements do you need visibility for where you can take actionable data? Right? When can you do something that will impact it? And that's, that varies, and we don't have a consensus on it yet, but that's what we're getting at. So it's the old proverbial, um, eat the elephant one bite at a time. I got 34 nodes, which three or four do I want to start with? And of course, what you, what you really need to see is the exceptions. I mean, you absolutely need to have an almost instant notification visibility of those exceptions. Yeah, in, um, through our system, 85% or so of the vehicles are arriving in the customer's hands um, per our expectations. With our lead times, everything built in. It's those 15, 10 to 15% exceptions that you talk about, and those can be all over the map, and those are the ones that drive our customers nuts. Right? Explain to a customer that is two hours from the port of Rhode Island, and the car's been there four days. The notes you get are, I'll come over and pick it up. Well, we've got to accessorize it. i got to get the Monroni label on it. I mean, I can give them all these. They don't care. It's been there four days. I've been waiting 100. When can I come pick up my car? Right? So it is the exception handling. And that gets to what's, you know, the previous question, what's too much data? Um, if I have a quality concern, if it needs a software update, if there was some damage that needs to be repaired, is that something you want to share with the customer? And everyone has a different opinion about that. I'm sure they do. Uh, let's talk a little bit comparing with after sales. Of course, you're also responsible for the service part side. Um, what are some aspects of ETA management on the service part side that perhaps we can learn for the vehicle logistics side? I, uh, another brilliant question, right? Um, here's my two cents worth. I think on the after sales side, the teams in after sales have been conditioned to think more of the customer. I'm getting a part to a dealership to fix a car. I'm not getting a, a part to a dealership to sit on a shelf. So there, I, I think there's a bigger tie into the customer and it becomes more Amazon-like. I got a package that's coming in the mail, it's this big. I need that part to put on the car. Now, versus finished vehicle logistics, I'm delivering a car to a dealership. Now if it's a sold car, yes, high urgency on the customer. But if it's gonna sit on the dealership lot, I think that connection with an actual customer tends to go away. And that's a cultural mindset that we all have to change because with limited inventory, that car is going to move. There is a customer on it, although it may not be sold now, it may be sold one, two, three, four days from now. So I think it's a cultural set that we have to change. Absolutely, and I think as you say, that link is gonna come closer and closer. When we look ahead now, last couple of years, what, what do you think the definition of good uh, will be or, or will it change? The KPIs that you're working with and looking at and assessing to, to, to judge your carriers and your performance, are they evolving? Yeah, I believe they are and I don't know exactly where it's, it's gonna end up. Everyone tends to measure the same things for port processing. My dwell time, my cost per car, did I make my wholesale objectives? 
ask yourself is getting volume out of the port in 16 days at $400 per car, does the customer care? Don't. <laughs> they do not care. So I think we need to drive toward more customer-focused metrics. Um, so if on the parts side, I've got um, system fill and face and fill. Did I fill that customer's order, right? When they place that order. So how does that translate to the finished vehicle logistics element? Did I deliver that car in the time committed? We don't, I, I have it now, I'm starting to get it, but it is not a core top three KPI. Um, Volkswagen is ramping up the EVs in a big, big way. Uh, imports up to now and now especially building in Chattanooga and, and plans to come. Um, how is this already starting to influence and reshape your network? I, we're ramping up fast. We're all in on electric vehicles. I think we've committed 90 billion globally to the development of them. In terms of network changes, right, you've, you've got the basic, I won't say cosmetic, but infrastructure changes. You got to have chargers in the ports. Great. Um, they're heavier vehicles. Fine. Can't get as many on a truck. Right? Um, don't necessarily have that um, restriction on rail. But now the question becomes little things that pop up. If I put it on a truck um, or on, let's say on rail, going to the northeast, these heavier cars are jumping and we're getting bumper to bumper hits. So we're getting damage because of heavier vehicles riding next to each other, riding over the rails. So do I need to put additional chocks into place? So everyone's got the, I need chargers, I need transformers. What happens if a battery dies? What's the state of charge? There's some basic stuff on how do I keep the car separated when they are in transit that I don't think we've got our heads around yet. Our new last question, um, because uh, just as we go into our ETA session, um, tell us a little uh, um, short information on what is Volkswagen Group doing? What are you really focused on most to improve ETA? Uh, well, first of all, the Volkswagen Group mindset is customer obsession, right? Um, we can talk about is that the right term, whatever, but look at everything we do from the customer perspective. So when we started with ETA, we could go off on this digitalization journey and I could spend $50 million to get that visibility. All right, fine. What can I do to get the customer a better ETA now? So we, do, we put in people and resources to manually handle the exceptions to give the dealers data now for the customer, right? Full stop, done. We have a group of people, you know, you'd argue non-value add, but this is a group of people that are chasing every individual VIN, that's an exception, working with quality, engineering, sales, logistics, whoever, what's the latest? What's the ETA that I can give that customer, right? That's manual. Now, when you do that, you learn that somewhere in our company, the data is there. It may be in 17 different um, systems for different functions. How do I pull that together into one system where everyone can speak with one set of facts. So manual process first, learning what data we need to look at so we can systematize it, and then what are the elements and the nodes that I want to focus on? That's the journey we're on. Well, it's a fascinating journey, and it's one that's not going to end uh, just this year. We're going to be keeping up with this for a while. Anu, thank you so much for sharing insights with us here and on stage to come. We'll be giving, bringing more highlights from the event and from a, a news session uh, in, the, in the days ahead. So stick with us. Thanks again. Um, signing out here from Finnish Vehicle Logistics, North America and Huntington Beach.